So we are reading from I Will Build You the Temple, the Jew's Story by His Holiness Giridharth Swami Maharaj with, from the chapter entitled Facing Challenges. Shrutakriti was skeptical about how Bhagwan would face a fair in Juhu. He was always dressed nicely in white silk dhoti and kurta, pressed very nicely. Shrutakriti recalled, and he told Prabhupada, don't worry, Prabhupada, I am going to take care of this situation. Here, I'll work very hard. But within a week, he didn't have the same luster anymore. Another was casualty. Almost every day, Bhagwan and I would go to the city to work on the permissions for the temple. We would usually return just in time to, talk some, to take some prasad and attend the class and kirtan. Prabhupada was so con concerned about the work that sometimes he would call us to the Vyasasana during the program and ask for the news. But he also wanted us to be happy in Krishna consciousness. So one evening during the program, he announced from the Vyasasana, you must always dance in Kirtan, even if you don't get the permission. So your Prabhupada is Exam, uh, here Prabhupada is highlighting the point that um, especially dancing in the front of the Lord during Kirtanas, during Arti times is very, very essential because this is what is pleasing to the Lordships and this will keep uh, enthusiasm in the devotee's heart lively. The new accommodations were complete but Prabhupada was determined not to leave Bombay until we get the NOC from the police and permission to build the temple. The fourth final volume of the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam had just been published and Prabhupada spoke on it every night, eventually determining, determining that the talks should be compiled into a book which was published as Teachings of Lord Kapila, the son of Devahuti. When the, when the additional stories were being, were being built on top of the existing tenement buildings, Prabhupada had instructed me to retain the white ceramic chip floating that covered the roofs to serve as the new floors. Unfortunately, the cement in the flooring started to crumble and in my presence, Bhagwan criticized me to Prabhupada, saying that I was so cheap that I had not put in proper flooring and now the cement was crumbling. Prabhupada knew that I would have accepted anything he said or didn't say. Still, he admitted to Bhagwan. I told him to do that. I was impressed and heartened by Prabhupada's forthrightness and integrity. Although uh, another time Bhagwan said, Prabhupada told him that we should be so expert that when people finish dealing with us, they would tell their friends, those Hare Krishna people may look like fools, but they are very intelligent. Don't mess with them. There was a scarcity in India during that period and many droughts and Prabhupada often spoke on Bhagavad Gita 3.14. Annat bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anna sambhava yagyat bhavati parjanyo yagya karma samud bhavaha. All living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from grains. Rains are produced by performance of yagya sacrifice and yagya is born of prescribed duties. What Krishna says is practical. He argued in one talk. Annat bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anna sambhavaha. But how we shall get anna, food grains? There is no rain. You see nowadays, there is no rain. Why? Because we do not know how to get rain. Krishna says parjanyat anna sambhavaha. There will be food grains when there is sufficient rains. And how there will be rain? Yagyat bhavati parjanya. 
if you perform yajna then there will be sufficient rains nowadays people say how to perform yajna it requires so much money so much ghee so much food grains to offer as oblation but krishna has made it very easy yajna sankirtanai prayer yajanti hi sumedasah the shastras know that in the kali yuga it will be very difficult to perform the ritualistic yajna ceremony because people will be poor poverty stricken when they will get ghee where they will get grains no this is yajna kalau nashta eva nas कलौ नस्त 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 गतिर्न्य हरेर्नाम 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 केवल चैंट हरे कृष्ण मंत्र दिस् इज यज्ञ प्रौपाद ऑलसो एम्फसाइज आर प्रसाद डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन प्रोग्राम एवरी संडे वी वुड फील वी वुड फीड पीपल एट द टेम्पल बट बिकॉज ऑफ द सो कॉल्ड स्केर सिटी the government had passed a law that a person or organization could not serve grains to more than 20 people at a time the intent was to restrict the lavish functions of the rich so that a few wealthy people would not be able to spend huge amounts on grand feast and celebrations while the poor people were suffering for want of grains we being charitable in nature were feeding people rice and dal and khichdi on sundays so although we were aware of the law we never thought much about it matre however arranged for the police to come one evening during sunday prasad distribution to arrest us on the grounds that we had violated the limits bhagwat das was in charge of the distribution bhagwan and i were also present but we all decided that it would be more threatening to our work if bhagwan or i was arrested the police was demanding someone so bhagwan said that he was in charge of the program and they arrested him and took him away though we were able to get him out on the bail within a day or two on his morning walk the day after bhagwan's Ar- bhagwat's arrest prabhupad was considering how mahatre just one man could do so much damage it might have been coming from the communist he suggested because prime minister indira gandhi or the indian government was in close touch with the russian government and we were presenting the only combine combination that could defeat communism spiritual enlightenment and krishna prasad it was possible that the russian leaders may have mentioned something to mrs gandhi about the threat from iskon while we were trying to deal with the police commissioner some friends suggested that we approach the additional police commissioner mr job who was supposed to be more friendly and accessible mr walia and mr bakshi said that they knew the additional commissioner and that he would help us as a rule whatever new information we got we would present to prabhupad and he would weigh it all and then guide the strategy he agreed that we should meet mr jog and appeal to him to help us then came the question of who should go prabhupad said that bhagwan and i should go i suggested adding lokanath since he was maharashtrian and most of the officers were maharashtrian with a strong ethnic identity at first prabhupad said 
that there was not a good that was not a good number that it should either be 2 or 4 but when we couldn't think of a fourth person who would actually help our presentation he agreed the three of us so we went and met mr job and he was very friendly but evasive he didn't commit to anything every morning in the temple Prabhupada would speak on Srimad Bhagavatam 3.25 in one talk he spoke about our situation in relation to a words describing the qualities and behavior of a sadhu Titikshava Karunika Suhurda Sarvadehinam Ajata Shatraha Shanta Sadhava Sadhu Bhushanam the symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies. He is peaceful. He abides by the scriptures, and all his characteristics are sublime. Although Prabhupada himself perfectly exemplified the words, he related it to the devotees in Juhu. Here, all the boys and girls, the devotees, they are concerned with Radha Krishna. That's all. Their whole business, day and night, is Radha Krishna. From early morning, 3 o'clock to night, 10 o'clock, their only business is Radha Krishna. That's all. Therefore, they are sadhu. And so many people are criticizing. We are not getting the sanction to build business because we have so many enemies. They say we are creating nuisance. We are chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. That is nuisance. This complaint is going to the police. So that is very difficult. Filled with emotion, Prabhupada exclaimed, Therefore, a sadhu is advised, Titikshava, tolerate. Tolerate all this nonsense. What can be done? We have no other alternative but to tolerate. Nobody, nobody is coming to help us. Our business is thankless. Because we are trying to create one temple, so many enemies are giving hindrance. You cannot do it. Therefore, Titikshava, you have to remain sadhu. You cannot become a sadhu. You have to tolerate. What can be done? At the same time, you have to be merciful. You know what has happened in this place, Hare Krishna land. So much attack by the police, by the municipality. Break this temple. We could have gone concluding what is the use of taking so much botheration? We have hundreds of temples outside India. If people here are not liking, let us go away. No, Karunikaha, we have come to distribute Krishna consciousness. We must tolerate and give this message to the people. Karunikaha, very merciful, in spite of all trouble. These American boys and girls have come to help me. Not that they have come because they are hungry. No, my mission is, you Americans, you chant Hare Krishna so that people of India will, will see how Americans are also chanting. Why not we? But unfortunately, such dull brains, that thought is not coming. But still, we have to do it. We have to tolerate. And we have to become Karunika merciful. Why should you want to be merciful? Paradukha dukhi. Kripam buddhi yastam aham prapadde. A Vaishnav understands. These people are engaged like cats and dogs in sense gratification. They are misguided. And then next life, they'll be punished. Let us do something for them. This is Karunika, out of mercy. There is no question 
of getting something money no we have got sufficient money but just to become merciful upon these people conditioned souls who are suffering on account of becoming animalistic without krishna consciousness the preacher the sadhus these are sadhus tritikshava tolerant never mind whatever hindrances and tribulations they are offering to us never mind tolerate and suhurda suhurda means the heart is so nice the vaishnavas is always thinking how a man should be saved from the clutches of maya he has no other desire a vaishnav is so kind that suhurda sarva dehinam he is kind not only to the human beings but to all embodied souls cats dogs trees plants insects a vaishnav will hesitate to kill even a mosquito sarva dehinam not that i shall take care of my brother only i am good and my brother is good no suhurda sarva dehinam and ajata shatravah when one is living in that way as a sadhu why will others become his enemy a sadhu does not create enemies but people become enemies out of their own character how can a sadhu create enemies krishna says sarva dharman parityaja mam ekam sharanam vraja and we are simply teaching my dear human being my dear friend you become a surrendered soul to krishna so what is our fault we don't create any enemy but they become enemy why shall i create enemy suhurda sarva dehinam but they become out of their own nature we are in the society human society and because we are spreading krishna consciousness the envious who are more dangerous than snakes are putting so many impediments but we have to tolerate we have no other alternative you see ajata shatravah shanta be more be peaceful what can be done depend on krishna these are the ornaments of a sadhu titikshava karunika suhurda sarva dehinam you must know what is a sadhu first a sadhu is devotee and if he is a devotee then all the symptoms are here now you find a sadhu and associate with him then your path of liberation will be open for us of course prabhupad was that sadhu and by his words and example he was encouraging us to try to become a sadhu as well just before 6 every morning i would walk up the stairs to prabhupad's room to accompany him on his morning walk but when another devotee and i went the day after rama ekadashi we were surprised to find the doors both to his quarters on one side and his staff quarters on the other locked i wasn't sure what to do but i gently knocked on both doors after a minute or two prabhupad secretary harikesh opened the assistant's door just a little and said that prabhupad had stayed up all night and completed his translation of shri chaitanya charitamrit that at the end he had written the most beautiful glorification of his guru maharaj that he was in an ecstatic mood and he had said that we should celebrate by having a feast in his concluding words prabhupad had written 
टुडे संडे नोवेम्बर टेन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फोर करस्पोंडिंग टू द टेन्थ ऑफ कार्तिक चैतन्य एरा फोर एटी एट द लेवेंथ डे ऑफ द डार्क फोर्ट नाइट द रमा एकादशी We have now finished the English translation of Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Shri Chaitanya Charitamrit in accordance with the authorized order of His Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Goswami Maharaj, my beloved eternal spiritual guide and friend. Shri Shri Radha Das Bihari Ji ki jai, Shri Shri Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ji ki jai, Shri Shri Gaur Nitai ki jai, Shri La Prabhu Pada ki jai. very nice today is also ekadashi and it corresponds to a wonderful uh, event of rama ekadashi <laughs> prabhupad recounted his first meeting with his guru maharaj and receiving his instruction to preach the cult of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in english in the western countries <coughs> at first he had resisted the order because at that time i was a complete nationalist a follower of mahatma gandhi i submitted to his divine grace that unless our country were freed from foreign subjugation no one would hear the message of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu seriously but at last i was defeated and convinced that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's message is the only panicke for suffering humanity i was also convinced that he that the message of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu was then in the hands of a very expert devotee that surely the message of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu would spread all over the world i could not however immediately take up his instructions to preach but i took his words very seriously and was always thinking of how to execute his order although i was quite unfit to be so when in 1950 prabhupad retired from his family life and then taken sanyas he had finally been in his own words completely ready to discharge the order of my spiritual master By the mercy of his divine grace I was able to come to New York on September 17 1965 Since then I have translated many books including Shrimad Bhagavatam The Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu Teachings of Lord Chaitanya a summary and many others In the meantime I was induced to translate Shri Chaitanya Charitamrit Shila Bhakti Siddhanta's favorite book I think that he is always seeing my activities and guiding me within my heart by his work As it is said in Shrimad Bhagavatam Tena Brahma Rida Ya Adi Kavaye Spiritual inspiration comes from within the heart within the supreme personality of Godhead in his paramatma feature he is always sitting within all his devotees and associates it is my wish that devotees of lord chaitanya all over the world enjoy this translation and i am glad to express my gratitude to the learned men in the western countries who are so pleased with my work that they are ordering in advance all my books that will be published in the future on this occasion therefore i request my disciples who are determined to help me in this work to continue their cooperation fully so that philosophers scholars religionists and people in general all over the world will benefit by reading our transcendental literatures Shila Prabhupad was like a grandfather to the children of Juhu affectionate and tolerant a people a couple of days after he completed his translation 
on Diwali. There were fireworks, both literal and figurative, at Hare Krishna land. And Srimati Warrior recalled, On Diwali evening, Mother Kanta, who was in the woman's ashram above our flat, and we were outside setting off fireworks. It was around nine, and I guess she wanted to rest, but we weren't finished playing. So she started throwing buckets of water down on us. My brother and I marched up to Srila Prabhupada's room. Chaitya Guru caught us and said, You can't go in there. He is resting. We must have made a lot of noise because Prabhupada called, Let them in. My, brother, my brothers went in and pleaded that we wanted to do fireworks. But Prabhupada said, No, it is too noisy. So my brothers gave up and walked out. But I, the youngest, stood there and said, But it is Diwali. We have got to break some firecrackers. Then Prabhupada said, All right, until 10. But after that, no more. So we got permission and broke firecrackers. And the next morning, Mother Kanta came with a plate of Mahaprasad and apologized for throwing water on us. Being so close to Srila Prabhupada at Hare Krishna land, we got to associate with him in a different light. Years later, Kanta Dasi remembered, throwing water on the warriors was probably the worst thing I ever did to the neighbors there. And they were so nice. I threw a bucket or two, but I am kind of follower a kind of, kind of a follower. I am not an instigator. All the women were complaining because we had to get up early and everybody was tired and grouchy. I, did, I don't even think I threw a first bucket, but I, had, but I had thrown one or two. I felt really bad about that the next day. Because I am all for those kinds of celebrations, especially when you have kids and grandkids. I had probably participated now, but we were grouchy ladies that time. One morning in Bhagavatam class, Prabhupada described the process of attaining love for Krishna, becoming mad for him. To understand Krishna, he said, is very, very difficult. Out of many, many millions of persons, one tries to make his life successful. And out of many, many such successful persons, yatatam api siddhanam, who have attained siddha, perfection, one may understand Krishna. First of all, we cannot understand Krishna. Then, where is the question of love of Krishna? If you do not understand somebody, how you can love him? Love is far, far away. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so kind that he is distributing Krishna Prem. Take anyone, come on, Krishna Prema Pradayate. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very practical. I want to give Krishna Prem. One should be ecstatic, emotional in Krishna Prem. One should cry for Krishna. And he taught everyone by his practical example how he was mad after Krishna. Govinda Viraherename. Shunyaitam Jagat Sarvam Govinda Viraherename. This is Krishna Prem. Without Krishna, one should see everything vacant. This is Radharani's Prem. Prabhupada was quoting Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shishtakshak. Yuga itam nimashena chakshusha pravesha itam shunya itam jagat sarvam govinda vidahename. O Govinda, feeling your suppression, I am considering a moment to be like twelve years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rains. I am feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. But what is not possible? for an ordinary human being. 
he continued it might be possible for chaitanya mahaprabhu or few devotees his immediate disciples the six goswamis were following the same principle the six goswamis lived in vrindavan and they were seeking krishna becoming mad he radhe vraja devi ke chalalite he nanda suno kutaha shri govardhana kalpa pada patale kalindi vanne kutaha गोशंताविति सर्वतो व्रजपुरे खेदैर महावीवलौ वंदे रूप सनातनौ रघुयगौ श्री जीव गोपालकौ देवर मैड आफ्टर कृष्णा वेर इज कृष्णा दे नेवर सेड वी हैव सीन कृष्णा एंड चैतन्य महाप्रभु सेड आई वाज ड्रीमिंग ऑफ कृष्णा सो व्हाई यू वोक मी आई हैव लॉस्ट द चांस इन दिस वे they were doing bhajan this is called viraha bhajan suppression the most highly recommended process so we should be awakened awaken our krishna our consciousness krishna consciousness in such a way that being separated from krishna we shall become mad after him this is krishna prem that prem was being distributed by chaitanya mahaprabhu and he is still distributing prabhupad was giving us a glimpse of his own internal mood of krishna consciousness and inspiring us to follow in his footsteps two days later when he reached verse 32 of the 25th chapter of the bhagavatam third canto when that service spirit is engaged in devotional service to the personality of godhead without any motive that is far better even than salvation he exclaimed a devotee is not very much anxious for mukti because a devotee is always mukti liberated if you have got millions of dollars why should you hanker after 10 rupees bhakti is such a nice thing but what is bhakti bhakti is animita bhagavati bhakti should be animita not with motive that i shall go to the temple and serve krishna for such some purpose krishna can fulfill any purpose you desire it is not very difficult for him because he is almighty full with all opulences so if you want material happiness from krishna it is not very difficult for him he can give you even mukti but to ask krishna for anything other than bhakti is foolishness uh, okay today is also the disappearance of ishwarpuri so i'll just read something for ishwarpuri also in glorification shri la krishna das kaviraj goswami has described shri chaitanya in shri chaitanya charitamrit that the first sprout of the desire tree of devotion was manifested in the person of shri madhvendra puri and that sprout developed into a sapling in the person of shri ishwar puri then in the person of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who was also the gardener himself that sapling became the trunk of a enormous tree the desire tree of devotion chaitanya charitamrit 9 adi leela 9.1011 so shri Ch- shri ishwar puri appeared in this world on the full moon day of the month of jeshta he served his guru shri madhvendra puri very faithfully especially during the end of shri puri pad's life chaitanya chaitamrit antilya 8.26 shri ishwar puri in his travels to various holy places once came to shri dham navri where he stayed in the house of shri gopinath acharya at that time shri nimai pandit was absorbed in his pastimes of learning ishwar puri learning ishwar puri entered nadia nagar in his disguise and thus no one could understand who he really was the noble minded gentleman was always absorbed in the mellows of devotion to shri krishna 
he was thus extremely dear to shri krishna and he was an ocean of mercy no one however could recognize him by his dress by the will of fate he came to shri advait acharya's house chaitanya charitamrit adi leela 11 he came to where shri advait acharya was engaged in worshiping shri krishna and quietly sat down there by his divine luster one vaishnav cannot remain hidden from another so advait acharya began to look at his direction again and again finally asked him who are you i am feeling you are a vaishnav sanyasi shri ishwar puri very humbly replied i am a low class shudra come to view your lotus feet mukundatta was also present and could also understand that this was a vaishnav sanyasi and thus he contrived to expose him in a very sweet voice he began a kirtan describing shri krishna's past time when shri ishwar puri heard that kirtan he at once fell to the ground and the earth beneath him became wet with the tears the devotees present there were dumbstruck we haven't seen a vaishnav like this before advait acharya firm very firmly embraced him now everyone could understand that this is madhvendra puri's dear most disciple shri ishwar puri and so loud shouts of hari hari rose up to the air shri ishwar puri remained at navdeep for some days so one day uh, nimai pandit he was returning from the home he was returning to his home from his school and suddenly happened by chance to meet ishwar puri on the way uh, ishwar puri was very mesmerized by looking at uh, nimai pandit he was by the effulgence he was very taken so shila ishwar puri inquired that you know what's your name where do you come from where do you live and mahaprabhu very humbly offered his namaskar and he uh, replied that his name was nimai pandit and then uh, mahaprabhu asked ishwar puri very humbly to kindly come to his house as a guest for lunch ishwar puri readily agreed uh because of his uh, because of the pleasant demeanor of mahaprabhu he very readily agreed to come to his house for lunch then sachi mata uh, she was preparing uh, for ishwar puri and mahaprabhu served wonderfully prasadam to ishwar puri and after that uh, he mahaprabhu accepted those remnants after that ishwar puri he remained in navdeep for few months and then he was staying uh, in the house of gopinath acharya so many a times mahaprabhu would call ishwar puri at his house for lunch even gadadhar pandit at that time was very small and as a young boy uh, he used to many a times uh, meet ishwar puri and was very and ishwar puri was also very affectionate to even gadadhar pandit at that time ishwar puri had composed a book called shri krishna leela amrit so one day ishwar puri while uh, while he met uh, nimai pandit he said uh, you are very well known as great pandit so why don't you correct this uh, work of mine called uh, shri krishna leela amrit so that time mahaprabhu smilingly said whatever a devotee speaks is dictated by shri krishna himself if anyone sees any fault in his in this then he is simply a sinful wretch whatever the poems he composes certainly krishna is very pleased by that krishna accepts the mood in which things are offered as the most substantial part of the offering to ishwar puri these words were like drops of nectar and he could understand that shri nimai pandit was an extraordinary person after passing some days in nadia ishwar puri continued his tour to the holy places now meanwhile mahaprabhu was bringing his past times of learning to the end so now he desired to reveal his true self to establish the, the you know to establish the age of distributing the love of god and so then mahaprabhu he went to gaya uh, in the pretext of offering um, shrad to his father and forefathers so it happened that ishwar puri also happened to come at the same time to gaya 
so after offering those oblations and all when mahaprabhu uh, came to the temple of um, vishnupad you know vishnupad mandir then ishwar puri also happened to at the same time be there and it is said that after a short time mahaprabhu he you know mahaprabhu was in great ecstasy so he had lost his consciousness he was lying there and seeing ishwar puri he got up to offer his obeisances so ishwar puri embraced him and two of them were drenched by each other's tears of love then mahaprabhu addressed ishwar puri my journey to gaya is successful just by seeing your lotus feet if one offers pinda at this holy place then his forefathers become delivered but simply by seeing you tens of millions of forefathers get liberation therefore your presence is even more auspicious than that of this holy tirtha all of the holy tirthas pray for the dust of your lotus feet therefore o puri pad i am praying at your lotus feet to ferry me across the ocean of material existence and to cause me to drink the nectar from krishna's lotus feet shri ishwar puri replied please hear me pandit ji i have understood that you are an incarnation of the supreme lord this morning i saw a very auspicious dream and now that has actually materialized from the first day i saw you at navdeep i have always thought of you i get such pleasure by seeing you as much pleasure i get by seeing krishna hearing this mahaprabhu bowed his head and smilingly replied this is my great fortune on another day mahaprabhu approached shri ishwar puri and requested him to initiate him into the divine mantra my mind is becoming very restless in anticipation of this initiation shila prabhupa shila puri pad means ishwar puri very blissfully replied what to speak of mantras i am prepared to offer my very life this is in chaitanya bhagavat adi leela 17.10 thereafter ishwar puri initiated mahaprabhu into the divine mantra then one morning shri ishwar puri came to where mahaprabhu was staying mahaprabhu was extremely pleased by seeing him and after offering his obeisances he invited him to stay for lunch ishwar puri replied that being able to accept footsteps from your hand is a matter of great fortune for me mahaprabhu himself cooked mahaprabhu himself cooked and then very carefully served his guru very and then carefully served his guru the prasadam there afterwards he smeared sandalwood paste on his body and put a garland of flowers around his neck thus the supreme lord himself taught how one should serve his guru without serving a great devotee it is not possible to receive love of godhead serving to the guru is the door to devotion on his return from gaya mahaprabhu came by the way of kumarhat a birthplace of his guru and he began to roll on the ground in ecstasy there as the ground became wet with his tears finally he collected some dust from that holy place and bound it in the corner of his upper garment saying this dust is as dear to me as my life then he set out for navdeep the birthplace of shri ishwara puri is located at within the present town of haleor which is near to uh, kancharpar railway station which is on the uh, shialda krishnanagar line thereafter mahaprabhu he accepted sanyas and by the order of the mother came to live at jagannath puri by this time ishwar puri had already left this world so he is so ishwar puri before leaving he had sent two disciples shri govinda and kashishwar brahmachari he he uh, he had ordered both of them shri govinda and kashishwar brahmachari to serve the lord at nilachal so anybody now wants to contribute uh, want to comment something want to contribute yes ramru pro wants to mike
Hare Krishna. When uh, um, when uh, uh, this Sri Govinda and uh, uh, Kashishwar Pandit, when the uh, yeah. Govinda Prabhu came first, and then later on he informed that my Guru Maharaj uh, informed me, uh, ordered me that I should go and serve you. So I immediately came running. But Kashishwar Pandit went to Kashi or something, then he will come later. Then uh, uh, Saravam Bhattacharya, uh, he expressed a doubt that how come uh, Ishwar Puri accepted a, a Sudra as his disciple. Hmm. Then Mahaprabhu said, uh, my Guru Maharaj, Ishwar Puri and Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they are completely hmm. independent. Hmm. So, uh, he can uh, uh, accept anybody as his disciple. Then uh, Mahaprabhu expressed a, uh, uh, he was apprehensive because uh, he said it is an offense to uh, engage a god brother in one service. Hmm. So how can I engage uh, uh, Govinda in my service? Then Sarumbhattacharya said uh, the order of the spiritual master is superior to anything else. So because uh, the spiritual master has ordered uh, uh, Govinda, you can uh, take him into service. <laughs> like that, uh, then you forgot to tell something very important. Mahaprabhu went to the birthplace of Sri Ishwar Puri, then he collected uh, uh, the uh, dust of uh, that uh, birthplace and then he packed it in his uh, chadar and then every day he used to eat uh, a few um, grains of Mitti that is collected from uh, uh, Ishwar Puri's birthplace. And uh, then all the devotees also, uh, they have collected that Mitti and then they were eating. So that was, Mahaprabhu showed how to show such uh, high respect to the spiritual master. Uh, one more thing, uh, anyway, uh, that was very important to say. Uh, when Madhavendra Puri uh, he was crying in separation from Krishna. I Dina Dayata Nadade. That shloka he was chanting. Then uh, this Ramchandra Puri, uh, he was saying, Why are you crying like that? There is Brahman is all pervading. Why didn't you meditate on you know, Brahman like that? Then Ishur Puri, uh, then uh, Madhavendra Puri uh, said, uh, Because of my bad karma, I got a disciple like you. <laughs> so, it is like a poison, you are like a poison, get out from here. But Ishwar Puri, he was actually uh, rendering service, uh, he was passing stool and urine in the bed, Madhavendra Puri, then uh, he was actually serving, cleaning, cleaning him nicely and all that. So, he rendered him such intimate service uh, without uh, hatred. Yeah. Then uh, uh, Madhavendra Puri blessed. He transferred all Krishna Prema to Ishwar Puri. <laughs> so that is the uh, greatness of uh, Guru Sushru, Guru Sushrusha. Like that. So he, Ishwar Puri was uh, chanting, narrating the pastimes of Krishna and then, uh, you know, decreasing the suffering, uh, separation, Virahabhada of mm. his Guru Maharaj, Madhavendra Puri. Like that. Uh, so very nice. Uh, then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hosted Ishwar Puri, prasad, you know, dinner <laughs> and all that. And then he remembered, oh, um, uh, Sachi Mata, she would cook such nice, uh, you know, uh, shak sabji <laughs> and all hmm. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Just a question, Prabhuji. That here we, we can have, have we can take questions later. I was asking for any contributions. I didn't give a class. I just read. Anybody wants to contribute, they can contribute. Anybody wants to speak about anything about Prabhupada, he can also speak. Okay. 
one contribution mm -hmm. and then I will ask. So, uh, it is very surprising that in the Western countries, they don't know what is this Guru Shishya Parampara. They don't know anything about Sanatana Dharma. But as soon as when Srila Prabhupada went and he introduced whole Parampara to them and he made them disciple and their disciple to disciple, disciple to disciple. So in a such a countries where there is no idea of Guru Shishya Parampara, Srila Prabhupada introduced this Gaudiya, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya and he made this Khan society so glorious. This is my contribution. Any other contribution? Anybody wants to comment? Okay. So we'll end the class here. Uh, Vijaya Ekadashi ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Okay. Somebody wants to say something. One. Hare Krishna. I'll just speak something about Srila Prabhupada. Um, all I know from my knowledge and uh, hearing all the gurus taking all the association of the senior disciples of the devotees. And the only conclusion is Srila Prabhupada is a great gift to all of us. We should take advantage of it. There is nothing that can stop us. He is there for all of us all the time. All you have to do is look upon him to Shri Shri Radha Ras Vihari. And uh, that's it. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Jai Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna.